Riley Pite, an impressive young man, uh, an 18 year old, and from a from a 18 year old, we go to a guy who's much much older. <laughs> They're getting a lot of that today. Yeah, well. Tracy Ringlesby was hammering me on my gray hair earlier, too. It's all right. That, that comes with the position. That, Jeff Bright. It's an easy target. <laughs> Jeff Bright just joins us. How you doing, man? Okay. Congrats. Yeah, thanks. He's, a, in all seriousness, for an 18-year-old kid, I mean, he is hes very, very mature. Seems that way. Yeah. You know, we've, as he, uh, you know, I was listening, he spoke about uh, Brett Baldwin and, um, you know, how well we've known him, uh, how well Brett's known him. For a long period of time, and um, so we feel pretty good about who he is, and uh, hopefully who he will become. R real quick, I want to ask you because I know you went and saw him. Uh, yep. I think a couple of times. Yep. And when you see a kid, and I, uh, you and I had chatted about this a while ago, and he, he says 96 to 102. Oh come on, the Aroldis Chapman <laughs> throws 102, 103. There aren't too many creatures out there that right. throw that hard. When you first saw him, were you like, wow? I mean, what was your first reaction? You know, um, the first three pitches that I saw him throw, and they were kind of, it was adverse conditions. It, it was threatening rain. It had rained the day before, and there was a lot of, they had to lot of work a lot on the field, and they got the field ready, but no one had checked on the mound. So they got on the mound like five minutes before the game was supposed to start, and it was a sponge, uh -huh. and all of a sudden they're panicking, and another 45, 50 minutes goes by before they can get the mound ready. So some adversity there, which is good to see. You know, he had warmed up. He'd gotten fully hot, fully ready, and then he had to kind of gather himself and and uh, and kind of right the ship a little bit. But then pitch one, two, three, it went 98, 98, 100. Um, you know, in, in uh, every scout in the world was there, it seemingly, and and everybody's radar gun said the same thing. And you're going, okay, well, this is legit. And first and foremost, is legit. But then, you know, you start to look beyond. Uh, you look at the body, you look at the athleticism, you look at the frame he carries around and how he carries it around and watch him run around and talk about him being a basketball player. And then you see the pitch mix for a young kid, uh, and it's not just about the fastball. It's about a lot more than just a fastball. So, um, you know, there's there's a lot of potential in this young man, and, you know, we're, we're excited to help him grow up as, a, as an athlete and as a person. And it doesn't seem like he's got uh, all these mileage on his arm like some other kids because he's talking about he didn't go to all these showcases in the summertime and do all these these special camps right yeah he's been fairly well protected um, and that's something that uh, that we, we certainly are, are talking to him about and something that we've known for a long period of time something that we'll take into consideration as we map out what the next uh, two to three months is going to look like for him and his, as he starts his career one and two on Brett Gardner Ellsbury with the First knock of the game for the Yankees. And this is popped up shallow center. Charlie comes under control, makes the catch one out. I just want to say something about Chad Bettis, because uh, we, we talked about it a few moments ago. He, he had four starts that were pretty rough for him, but today he looks like he's back to what we saw earlier this year. Yeah, you know, the nice thing about Chad, in terms of the progression of his career in, at the major league level, he's been through that that time period that was really really tough he's persevered through a shoulder setback a couple years ago he has you know found himself with the help of, of Steve Foster and Darren Holmes and Mark Wiley and Daryl Scott we found a delivery that works so now we know when things don't go real well it's not you know well maybe it's this maybe it's that maybe it's this maybe it's that it's all right this is what this is what's going on if it's a mechanical issue it's whittled down to very few things now where it wasn't that way years ago and uh, that's a good that's a good place to be in as an athlete mm -hmm. when you know that you know you can pinpoint oh man I'm, I'm doing this right maybe it's it's it, instead of just trying to have <laughs> hazardly <laughs> guess what the heck's going against on. the yeah, wall I mean, and say hope it sticks that's a good place and, to be and, and you know it's borne out in his confidence we were discussing this early in the game that Chad despite the four you know tough starts let's be honest the last four have not been uh, have not been pretty he still remains the same guy body language wise when you talk to him he knows he has a lot of ability he knows he's done it before and obviously belief. he's pitching well yeah you're talking about belief versus confidence um, and he believes he believes he's a big leaguer he believes he's a he's a member of the rotation and should be and and he's proven that to himself he's earned that through the work and you're right the work the worth that work ethic doesn't change even though he struggles the belief in himself doesn't change the confidence might go up and down a little bit but uh, he's got that core belief we all have discussed this quite a bit going back to the draft for a moment 
I like the organizational philosophy of going to get power arms. And we talked a lot about Riley Pint. That's power arm, obviously. Kid is throwing triple digits in high school. Right. But your next two are college picks in the first three rounds. Kid out of Georgia who has a big arm, a left-hander who has who has a very good arm out of Vanderbilt, two high-quality programs. And you can't have enough of these guys, can you? Well, some of them aren't going to, you know, turn out exactly how you, you know, whether they're about to be in your organization, whether they're already in your organization, whether they're going to be in your organization at some point in the, in the future. Not every, you know, pitcher makes the big leagues and becomes everything that uh, that he has a potential to become. So um, you really want to take, that doesn't mean you just kind of randomly go get anybody who can throw hard. I mean, you have to make educated assessments over, you know, which hard throwers are going to become or have the ability to become the pitchers that uh, you want them to become. And, and you have to make judgments on the type of people they are as well. And so, but it is important. And it's, um, it's definitely certainly part of what we're trying to do. It's not the, you know, it's not the be all and end all, but it's, it's certainly a piece of it. How many guys did you actually see this year on, before the draft? Amateur wise, yeah, amateur wise, yeah. Um, probably this year about 30 ish, 30, 35, uh, a little bit less than, than last year. Um, and, uh, but it's uh, it's good to be out there. It's great to interact with our scouts. You know, I don't I don't get a chance to to interact with our area scouts a whole lot during a, the course of a full season. So it's great to be able to spend time with them and drive around in, in cars and go from game to game. You know, uh, with, with them, it's it's great to be able to to hang out with the cross checkers, um, who, you know, I mean, the, one of the things that's lost is and we talked about it. We talk about it every year at the end of the draft. You know, we we come out. We're getting close to our last picks of the draft, and it's like, all right. Well, I guess Monday, you know, the, we, we get going, the scouts get going for 2017. I mean, they, they're already talking about right. it. You know, they, they just don't, it never stops. And, uh, and they'll take a, a breath here or there, but they're out. Guys are getting ready. Okay, so what, what's my summer going to look like scouting-wise? And so things don't really stop, and it's nice to be able to interact with those guys and, and get to know them better and have good baseball conversations and get, get to know their, you know, what's going on in their families. Yeah, it's, it's a, just a good time. To, it, it's the lifeblood of, a, of sure. an organization. Sure. And they, you know, those those guys feel, you know, they have a chance, not that they always do, but they, they can be the most disconnected in the organization because the, the life of an area scout can be a solitary one at times. And, um, you know, we do, we work very hard. Um, Billy Schmidt and, and Gus and Danny Montgomery and Damon and the rest of our our cross checkers to make sure guys feel connected and they feel like a team uh, but there is a solitary nature to that job and you try to you try to make as many connections during the season as possible and this is a hotbed time of year because the weather's finally good across most of the country and you know the high school seasons are over but summer ball is th yep. this is when you're looking at a lot of guys and you know, the cape the college I mean, now these college are, yeah. yeah these college leagues are going northwoods league cape league you know i mean all these things are going on Big strikeout of Chase Headley for the second out. That's the fourth strikeout for Chad today. Let's take a look at this breaking ball. And he went off speed to get the strikeout on Headley. Second or third time today, he's just throwing that 12 to 6 hammer, just coming down into the zone on the Subaru Super Mo to get that swing and miss. This guy's always concerned me. For whatever reason, he came up with Arizona, and Didi Gregorius has always swung the bat well against the Rockies, particularly here. In fact, a 405 lifetime average at Coors Field. Hit a pop fly to left his first time up. Two outs, two on for the Yankees. The Rockies up 1 0. Jeff Breidich is with us. Top of four. And the fastball right on the inside corner. He's, he's varied his velocity with his fastball today. He's cut it a little bit. It's been as high as 97. Still has it in there. Yeah. But you know, speed variance with, with pitch mix. That's, That's what we saw from Tyler Anderson the other day. Yeah. It's something that uh, you, know, you can, even though the fastballs and changeups are important here, but especially fastballs. Fastball, a well placed fastball, well located fastball, in my opinion, is still the best pitch in the game. And those are so important. And we just talked about power arms. But big league hitters are big league hitters, and they make adjustments, and the best make adjustments very quickly. And so you have to be able to have speed variance in your pitch mix. Um, to throw timing off. Just missed he off has, to the outside corner. Chad's done a nice job uh, yep. developing some of that. One ball, one strike.
Let's go ground ball to DJ. That, that always but works. I, I ground, ball, the ground ball anywhere has been a good thing for the Rockies this year, inducing more ground balls than virtually any team in Major League Baseball. Well, that's something that was preached in spring training. Yeah, then cut down on the walks and try to get those. You know, use your defense because you have a very good defense here. Yeah, you, you know, it's you try to the way that organizationally we try to talk about it is put it in the positive. You know, if you say don't do this, yeah, right. human beings go, well, I'm going to do that, right? So you say, how are we, how are we going to get better at commanding the zone and pounding the zone and forcing bad contact or forcing swings and misses rather than, hey, we need to cut down on walks, this and that. Um, so it's a focus. It's really about how we do it and how we, how we focus on it. Uh, and how we go about that process, but uh, and it's organization, it's from, organization. The, from, from the bottom to the top. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Got to make a pitch here, three and one, on Gregorius, and that's a base hit to left, and Jacoby Ellsbury is going to come home with the tying run. So Gregorius hurts the Rockies again, and it's one-one in the fourth. Gregorius hit the home run yesterday. This time he takes a fastball away from him and hits it in that 5 6 hole. He hit it solidly, just like a lot of big league hitters. You fall behind 3 1, they're going to be able to, to take a good pass at the baseball, and Gregorius did. That'll bring up Aaron Hits. But last night, De La Rosa, for not having the stuff that he had certainly on Thursday against the Pirates coming out of the bullpen, he was behind in a lot of counts. But he did what we've seen Jorge do so many times in the past. He didn't have this, you know, he didn't have the great split either because he only struck out one, and we've seen a high volume of strikeouts even when it hasn't been great this year. But, you know, five shutout innings. When you don't have, we always use Tiger Woods' uh, old line now, when you don't have your A stuff, I thought that was impressive, especially because, you know, I, listen, he's won a lot of games. He's had a great deal of success here. But th that always enters your mind when you haven't had success as a starter. And I thought he did a terrific job last night. He did. And it was, um, you know, I think it's a, a credit to the work that he put in. I think it's credit to the attitude and, and the understanding of, uh, you know, the move to the pen and, and why it needed to happen uh, was for his betterment. Uh, he had a good attitude about it. Everybody involved did in terms of the coaching staff, knowing that it was the best thing for the team, best thing for the player, and let's let's go fix what's broken right now. Let's go fix what's not working. Um, and it you know it seems like you know signs are pointing up, right? I mean we, we've seen good work out of him from the pen now. He, we had a good game, uh, a com very competitive game yesterday. Um, you know, we're starting to see some of the flashes of, of what we're accustomed to seeing. And one of those fixes was kind of smoothing out his delivery, making it more uh, so it flowed better to yeah. the play. Better timing. Um, That's going to cost the Rockies a run as the throw from Tony Walters was high. And on the air, second and third, the Yankees take a two to one lead. This reminded that that reminded last. me of the seventh inning last night with the swinging bunt. I mean, there were so Chad, many chip Chad, shots I think last Chad, night. Right, exactly. Chad should have taken it right there. He had it, but was called off by Tony, and then he threw up the line. Tough place for a first baseman to try to reach for that. But Chad is right there. He he, he could have just barehanded it, and then made the throw. Instead, Tony called him off, thinking he could get there. Just watch this after the play. It looks like his knee buckles. It checked out okay, but just a free out and an extra run. They're giving him a hit and then an E2. First baseman, number 24. So we're talking Davis. injuries. Have you, have you gotten an update on Gerardo Parra? Um, he had an MRI today, and we're uh, we're kind of waiting for the final results here. Uh, hopeful, but 
You know, it was a pretty nasty collision, so we're hopeful, but we're prepared for, you know, also prepared for the worst. But with the day off tomorrow, that's kind of why you're holding off to see what yeah. that, that MRI result yeah. is. Exactly. Now this becomes a really big sequence now. Ike Davis at the plate at a deep fly ball to left his first time up. Runners at second and third. The Yankees have snuck ahead two to one. Talking about how he came up with the Mets. This is back at Chad. And that'll get the Rockies off the field. Jeff's going to stick around yep. for a half inning. We'll sure. come back and talk a little bit about the news of the day as well concerning Jose Reyes. Two to one, Yankees.